Welcome to Eric's life, week 73? 72. 72? You idiot. Eric's a fucking retard. And we just saw Guardians of the Galaxy and it was wonderful. Volume 2. No, Eric, we saw the first one in theaters. Well, we did see the first uh, one last week to prepare ourselves. It was last really great. week. We saw it last night. Well, it's the last vlog week. Oh my god. A retard. Drive right into Taco Bell. Drive okay. directly into it. Do it. So yeah, we will give our full review in a second, which will be a whole day for us, but in a second for you. <laughs> but in general, we thought it was great. We loved it. Yee yee, skeet skeet, skirt skirt. Taco Bell! So I'm actually just going to go ahead and review Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 because Ryan says that everything I'm about to say he basically echoes. Um, which is often the case. So, this movie was better than I thought it was going to be. I had high hopes for it, but I was also a little worried, um, due in part to the mixed reviews and just the fact that it was a sequel that had to follow up one of the greatest Marvel movies so far. And I think it did that pretty well. I think th the two films complement each other very well. Uh, this film is really about the character development. There's a lot of feels in this movie, more so than you would expect. Like Ryan said, two or three scenes in every act, if you're counting that there's three acts. And they really go in depth for pretty much every character, and also a couple of characters that were more in the supporting role um, in the first film. So that was pretty awesome. But um, this film also tries really hard to top the action and the comedy. And, uh, you know, for the comedy, to measure that, I'll have to, like, re-watch it again. Um, but as it stands, I think it it either does a really good job of that, or maybe succeeds in both. Which again, is really good. Also, not to spoil it, but the antagonist in this film is actually a good villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Of which there are hardly any, to be honest. There aren't many good villains in the MCU at all. And this film provided that. I was kind of shocked. But no, I think it's a really, really good villain. So yeah, points there points earned for this movie that most other MCU movies don't even come close to earning. That was really good. Um, you can really expect a lot of the same. If you've seen the first film, you go into this one, you're going to get a lot of the same comedy action. Uh, I think this movie was actually more adult um, in terms of the jokes than the first one, so keep that in mind if you're sending your kids. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's not much else to say. It's just a good superhero movie. One of the best. Probably in my top ten already. And that's saying something. Because I've kind of been, you know, in that superhero drought lately. Well, not a drought. Like, um, a drought of excitement, I guess. Um, where I've just kind of been tired of them. But so far this year, 2017, has been awesome. Because Logan was spectacular. One of the best superhero films. And now we have this. So, we might have just gotten the uh, two best of the six that are coming out this year already. But hey, the other ones could be good too. Holding out hope, but not too much hope. So yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. You want my extended thoughts, you can read my review down below as well. But yeah, pretty happy with it. And also, this is basically my birthday movie, because it came out May 5th, two days after my birthday. We were just a little late. Ryan, what is that? It's Mario Kart Deluxe. 8 Deluxe. Oh my god, I can't even see the 8, it's so stylized. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we did get this eventually, but I didn't want to spend all of my money on it because, I mean, we do own this game already, with the DLC, but Ryan paid for half of it, so I chipped in too. And now we have it, so, hooray. I chipped in too. We did it. What? I, we paid for half of it. How is that not chipping in? It's, yeah, I don't it's think the that's... the art of chips. That's not what I would say chipping in is... I chipped in $30. Okay. You chipped in $30. We bought the game. Yeah, it's really pretty. Mmm, tasty. So, what are the five new characters in the game? King Boo, Dry Bowser. I think Dry Bowser is already in it. Was he? Yep. You're, you're, you're on the right track. It's something dry. Bones. Mm-hmm. The Inkling Kids. Yep. And the most important character of all. Bowser's eighth son. Junior? Yes. 
I mean seventh son. Wendy is a woman. They are his children. Damn it. Well, now we can have fun battle mode. Hooray. It looks Ew. Thanks for talking me into it. Don't touch sticky things in the vehicle. I had an appointment in Erie today. Well, I'm about to have it. So we're out on the road, so I get to bring the switch with me. That's right. Now we have the Golden Corral. And I have to say, you know, when I was younger, this place seemed more magical because you could get so much food whenever you want. And in any amount. But yes, it's a bit flight place. It's pretty great. It's very, it's very corral, corrally. Corrally is a verb now. A woman made a good point that, you know, you don't touch the food with your hands, but everyone touches those handles, or those, those, those prongs that everyone uses to pick up their food. So the germs still find a way to win at the end of the day. So in conclusion, going back to the Switch, is pretty freaking awesome that I can literally take that console on the go on a car ride down and back about a three hour ish round trip and literally beat every single Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Cup on 150cc in that time. I literally just finished when we got home. So that was really good timing. And to be able to accomplish that much gaming, whereas otherwise I would have just like maybe looked out the window. Or played on 3DS, but I'm not playing any 3DS games at the moment. The fact that I'm able to do that now with the Switch is pretty freaking awesome. So awesome, in fact, that I think I'm dedicating the whole vlog to that topic. Switch and Go. I'm curious, if to anybody else who has the system, have you had really awesome experiences where you actually got to use the Switch's main functionality, the gimmick of being able to go wherever besides your home or your living room and go play the system? Or, you know, take it somewhere, I haven't done this yet, but detach the Joy-Con and literally play a game with those two controllers, such as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, you know, on the go, just at a random place. The, the possibilities are really freaking cool. And uh, I haven't got much use out of it yet because I really just played Zelda over Spring Break at home. But now that it's summertime and I have it with me all the time and I'm not that busy anymore, I can really experience the true potential of the Nintendo Switch and it's pretty damn awesome it really is it's freaking cool you know and combined with that and um, it combining all the other gimmicks of previous consoles is really fantastic for instance Mario Kart 8 Deluxe I can still use tilt controls if I want to use motion controls to steer um, my vehicle in that game so I mean it's not like we've lost anything we're only gaining new technology and new possibilities I love it so much and the system's only been around for a month, no, two months and a week. And it's already got the best Zelda game and the best Mario Kart game, arguably. That's pretty impressive. It's only going to go up from here. It is now Tuesday night, and I have a couple updates. First of all, I gave blood today. And it was the first time of the more than a dozen times I've donated blood. I mean probably near 20 times at this point, honestly. It's the first time of all those times that the person sticking the needle in failed to get it in correctly, which means not only do I have it in the right arm, which was the failed experiment, I have one in the left arm too. I'm gonna take those band-aids off now because it's been about five hours and usually that's enough time for my arms to stop bleeding. It might not be, I guess we'll see. So yeah, that was interesting. I get pretty squeamish around needles and blood, so I usually don't watch it happen. Um, but after she tried to adjust the needle and it came out instead, I couldn't help but look at my arm, and there was a pool of blood coalescing in the crevice of said arm. I don't like those sorts of things. So that was a new experience for me. I can at least tell a story of a blood donation experience that didn't go as planned. But initially, I didn't even go to this church to donate blood. I went to this church to vote, um, which leads me to my soapbox about college kids who want to vote. Because I was not allowed to vote. Because when I turned 18, I originally registered in my hometown here to vote in elections, primaries, general, whatever, what have you. And um, I did, because I, I voted at that location before. Um, I eventually registered to vote in Clarion instead because I was there um, 
when general elections happened in November, so I thought that was easier overall than doing absentee ballots for my hometown, and more personal, and I could make my decisions there at the booth. I just felt like it was a better option. Um, so since I'm registered to vote in Clarion, and since the semester ended and I'm back home, I can't vote in this May election, which was mostly our local elections um, for 2017 right now. Um, I couldn't do that because you can only be registered in one place at one time. So for people like me, specifically college students, um, who basically have two homes at once, um, you kind of get screwed, which is just really dumb. It's really dumb especially if you have been registered um, in that place before. For instance, I have voted there before. In my opinion, the laws should be set up so that if you voted there before, you should just be able to vote there again. You shouldn't have to re-register in a place you already registered in the first place. That doesn't make any sense to me. It just seems like a lot of red tape that's completely unnecessary. Um, I would like to hear any counter-arguments to that, but to me, I don't really see any negatives to letting people who are eligible to vote vote in the same places they have before just because you're technically registered at another place for the time being because you live there more often it really is just kind of silly so in the end i couldn't do my civic duty of voting but i could do my civic duty of donating blood which was more of an ideal than i had expected all right let's see if i'm still bleeding after all ouch no i'm not Success. And now it's the end of Wednesday night, same exact spot, but haircut and shirtless, so it's somewhat different. I'd like to make the vlogs more kinetic, but admittedly, in this weird month of May, in which I don't have a job or school to worry about, um, it's just kind of laid back and weird in that sense, but it's not much to complain about. However, I'd like to do some exciting things in the next couple weeks. We'll see if that actually pans out. It might not, but hey, you're already here throughout this video for so long that you apparently are still watching for some reason. So I might as well go into a different topic. Um, been playing a lot of video games lately, as you might know. But I recently um, revisited and completed, once again, a childhood classic. Literally one of the first games I ever remember seeing. Some of my earliest memories are actually connected to this game, either playing it, watching my father playing it, or dancing along to the DK rap. So of course, the game is Donkey Kong 64. And I have to say though, unlike some other games in which haven't really lost their magic for me, like Super Mario 64 or Star Fox 64 for example, Donkey Kong 64 has kind of lost its luster. Honestly, I mean, it's definitely got some real nostalgic stuff hitting me all over the place, right? That makes sense. I mean, I grew up on the game. It's a childhood game. It's not a bad game either. It's a, it's a 3D platformer that's, um, it, it's up there. Certainly not the best 3D platformer. Rareware makes generally good games. But if you're going for 101% completion on this title... <laughs> I want to say it was a gem sarcastically, but I, I don't need to be that mean. Um, you're going to run into a lot of irritating experiences. There are just these tons of mini-games and other weird things that aren't really part of the normal gameplay that you would think a platformer would entail, um, such as jumping, attacking, stuff like that. There's just so many weird mini-games and side games and that you have to... Um, accomplish in order to get all the collectibles in the game and that is really where the fury lies with this game it's honestly one of the most frustrating games if you're trying to complete it and it's also too long 3d platformers in my opinion should not be more than 20 hours long um, even at 100 percent that's just too long to me that gets into hardcore action adventure um, territory or RPG territory. Otherwise, games shouldn't really be that long, in my opinion. And that's without, you know, touching the multiplayer um, in the game as well, which there is in Donkey Kong 64. That's literally just single player, one file, one playthrough, coming from the perspective of a gamer who's played that game before and also earned 101% completion. 
I've grown up on it. If you were going for that completely blind, it'd probably take you an extra 10 hours. Because I actually thought this game might take 40 hours to play through because I just couldn't remember. It just felt that long in the past. But it really wasn't. My total play time for this session of Donkey Kong 64, I haven't played the game in several years, mind you, so I also wasn't the freshest in my mind for some of the things. But my overall play time this time was 21 hours and 22 minutes. That's a lot of freaking play time for a platformer. I mean, usually you think most 2D platformers are a few hours long. Um, maybe 3D platformers around 10, 12 hours long-ish. I, I would have to guess that's how much Super Mario 64 is if you got all the stars and knew what you were doing. But this game is about twice as long. It's crazy. And, and it, you can tell it's kind of like padded out in a way because on one hand, having five playable characters as you do in Donkey Kong 64 is really cool. On the other hand, you kind of have to revisit and redo a lot of the same stuff with different characters, albeit with minor changes and different minigames available, stuff like that. They all have different abilities, so again, the game can be really fun at some points, but it can also be very frustrating. And if I feel like the length was cut by by a third, at least, that'd be good. Get rid of, honestly, the minigames is really where it's padded out. Not necessarily so. Um, you would have a better game at the end of the day. But back in 1999, I don't think the creators of this game really recognized that. I don't really think gamers cared that much back then about what was in your 3D platformer. But nowadays, there's definitely some irritating stuff in there. Um, and that's coming from the perspective of someone who still loves Super Mario 64 so much that I herald it as one of my favorite games of all time still. I still think it holds up that much. So it's not impossible to make a non infuriating 3D platformer. But, if you overdo it, you end up getting Donkey Kong 64. The DK rap is still one of the greatest moments of video game history, though. That cannot be disputed. Also, more exciting news! Um, I worked my butt off probably more this semester than any other semester um, in a few respects. I'm not sure if it's truly the most challenging in my college career. But in terms of coursework, it pretty much was. I had six classes, um, which was new. Um, and I got all A's, except for one class, which is Com Law. Um, so that means I got better grades than I was expecting. I was expecting perhaps two or three B's. I only got one. So that's exciting. Hooray. Which means my research paper got me an A for that class. Which means my self-destruction, you know, overnight, you know, crafting that paper was totally worth it. So, if there's a lesson in there, tell me. You know, if you kill yourself, you might you might get some rewarding things out of it. Nearly kill yourself. I'm glad that semester is over. Looking into the fall, I have less classes, easier classes. It really is going to be going downhill from here. We're hitting the home stretch. But for more than three months, I don't have to worry about schoolwork. I can just do some research on the side, which I've already started. So, that feels pretty great. The undergraduate career is nearly finished. And after going back and forth in this living room for quite a while now, I think I'm just going to end the vlog here. So, again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week here in Eric's life. That's mine.